Hello students, welcome to the lecture on international institutions and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Define International Monetary Fund, explain the Asian Development Bank and World Bank, describe the International Finance Cooperation or IFC, explain the UNCTAD, understand the IDA and IBRD, Let's start with the concept of international institution. Although these have never been a clear agreement on what the term development means, much thinking on the issue has been governed and guided by several international institutions established in the aftermath of World War II. Most of these institutions were set up to promote peace, prosperity and development. However, their role in international relations over the last 65 years has proved to be quite controversial. Two of the most influential international institutions are known as the Bretton Woods Institutions, namely the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, more commonly referred to as the World Bank. Most organizations promote and often demand a neoliberal, free trade global economic system. In the wake of World War II, both institutions were primarily concerned with rebuilding European countries. However, during the 1960s, as many African countries gained their independence, they applied for membership of the IMF and the World Bank, applying for loans to construct newly formed countries. Thus, the institutions began to focus more on the developing world. The USA and European countries hold the majority of the voting rights and have been accused of protecting their own interests at the expense of the welfare of other countries. In the case of the MIF, the richest 9% of the world's population hold 40% of the voting rights and the poorest 31% have 5% of the voting rights. Historically, the leader of the World Bank is a US appointee and the leader of the MIF is a European appointee. Although the institutions are very similar in ethos and methods, the main difference between them is that the MIF is mainly a cooperative institute concerned with monitoring the balance of payments and currency exchange rates while the World Bank is principally a developmental institution. Trade organizations should be established to promote free trade and the scrapping of protectionist measures. These policies have provoked similar criticism as the MIF and the World Bank have from the development community for promoting damaging neoliberal policies. Let us now discuss the International Monetary Fund. The International Monetary Fund or the IMF is a public institution established with money provided by taxpayers around the world. This is important to remember because it does not report directly to either the citizens who finance it or those whose lives it affects. Rather, it reports to the ministries of finance and the central banks of the governments of the world. This authoritative statement comes from Joseph Stiglitz, who served for seven years as chairman of President Clinton's Council of Economic Advisers and as chief economist for the World Bank. Stiglitz is a mainstream globalist, but still honest enough to have become disillusioned with the corrupt practices of the IMF and the World Bank. The purpose and the structure of the IMF. The IMF is the central institution of the international monetary system, the system of international payments and exchange rates among national currencies that enable business to take place between the countries. The IMF works for global prosperity by promoting the balanced expansion of world trade, the stability of exchange rates and the avoidance of competitive devaluations, orderly correction of balance of payment problems. The IMF's statutory purposes include promoting the balanced expansion of the world trade, the stability of the exchange rates, the avoidance of competitive currency devaluations and the orderly correction of a country's balance of payments problem. Although the IMF has changed in significant ways over the years, the current literature makes it quite clear that the statutory purpose of the IMF today are the same as when they were formulated in 1944 to facilitate the expansion and balanced growth of international trade and to contribute thereby to the promotion and maintenance of high levels of employment and real income and to the development of the productive resources of all members as primary objectives of economic policy. Now moving on to the next topic, we will study the Asian Development Bank and the World Bank. The ADB's trade finance program, TFP, fills market gaps for trade finance by providing guarantees and loans to banks to support trades. Backed by its AAA credit rating, ADB's TFP works with over 200 partner banks to provide organizations with the financial support they need to engage in import and export activities in Asia's most challenging markets. 
With dedicated trade finance specialists and a response time of 24 hours, the TFP has established itself as a key player in the international trade community, providing fast, reliable and responsive trade finance support to fill market gaps. A substantial portion of TFP's portfolio supports small and medium-sized enterprises (SMEs), and many transactions occur either intra-regionally or between ADB's developing member countries. The program supports a wide range of transactions from commodities and capital goods to medical supplies and consumer goods. The World Bank The World Bank recognizes that financial management is an integral part of the development process. In the public sector, it ensures accountability and efficiency in the management of the country resources. In the private sector, it promotes investment and growth. Therefore, the first objective of the bank's attention to financial management is to improve the borrowing country's financial management performance. At the same time, if the bank is to sustain the confidence of its shareholders, other stakeholders and the public at large, it must be able to show that its funds are used appropriately. Thus, the second objective of the bank's financial management work is to provide acceptable assurance on the use of bank loan proceeds. While these objectives are sought even in emergency operations, including post-disaster reconstruction projects, adjustments. Role of the World Bank The World Bank supports two broad goals in Southeast Europe, the poverty reduction and the economic and social development, the latter in support of the country's ambition to join the European Union. The central vehicle for supporting the national reform programs of each country is the so-called country assistance strategy. It is based on an assessment of the country's priorities, its past portfolio performance and creditworthiness. The CAS stretches strategic priorities and determines the level and composition of financial and technical assistance that the bank seeks to provide the country. The framework for poverty reduction and economic growth are the country's own poverty reduction strategy papers, which is developed by the government through a participatory consultation procedure. In terms of financial assistance, over the period of 1999 to 2005, the World Bank has been supporting the region through a wide range of development projects, collectively amounting to approximately 5.9 billion US dollars. These projects are directed towards a number of sectors, including infrastructure and energy, private sector development, poverty reduction and economic management, social sectors, rural development and the environment. Let's now know the meaning of International Finance Cooperation, IFC. The International Finance Cooperation, IFC, is an international financial institution which offers investment, advisory and asset management services to encourage private sector development in developing countries. The IFC is a member of the World Bank Group and is headquartered in Washington, D.C., United States. It was established in 1956 as the private sector arm of the World Bank Group to advance economic development by investing in strictly for profit and commercial projects which reduce poverty and promote development. The IFC's stated aim is to create opportunities for people to escape poverty and achieve better living standards by mobilizing the financial resources for private enterprise, promoting accessible and competitive markets, supporting businesses and other private sector entities, and creating jobs in delivering necessary services to those who are poverty-stricken or otherwise vulnerable. Since 2009, the IFC has been focused on a set of development goals which its projects are expected to target. Its goals are to increase sustainable agriculture opportunities, improve the health and education, increase access to financing for microfinance and business clients, advance infrastructure, help small businesses grow revenues and invest in climate health. The IFC is owned and governed by its member countries, but it has its own executive leadership and staff which conducts its normal business operations. It is a cooperation whose shareholders are member governments which provide the paid in capital and which have the right to vote on its matters. Originally more financially integrated with the World Bank Group, the IFC was established separately and eventually became authorized to operate as a financially autonomous entity and make independent investment decisions. It offers an area of debt and equity financing services and helps organizations face the risk exposures while refraining from participating in a management capacity. The International Finance Cooperation IFC is part of the World Bank Group.
It is the largest global development institution focused on private sector development in low income and other emerging markets. IFC's purpose is to create opportunity for people to escape poverty and improve their lives by promoting open and competitive markets in developing countries, by supporting organizations and other private sector partners where there is a gap helping to generate productive jobs and deliver essential services to the underserved. IFC is a major player in global development, finance generating new investment commitments of around $12.2 US billion in 2010 and 11, in addition to advisory service operations with an approved value of $820 million US dollars. It usually generates a profit, some of which it contributes to the International Development Association, IDA, Australia's shareholding in IFC is 2% of the subscribed share capital, making Austria the 12th largest shareholder. In 2010-11, Australia provided $4.8 billion to IFC as a non-core contributions and signed approximately $17 million of new contracts with IFC. The purpose of IFC IFC strives for positive development, outcomes in the activities it supports in developing countries. These activities include investments financed directly by IFC, investments implemented through financial intermediaries FIs, or managed by IFCs, asset management organization or any other IFC subsidiary, as well as investments funded in part or in whole by donors and advisory services IFC's commitments. IFC's mission is to fight poverty with passion and professionalism for lasting results to help people help themselves and their environment by providing resources, sharing knowledge, building capacity and forging partnerships in the public and the private sectors. IFC believes that sound economic growth grounded in sustainable private investment is crucial to poverty reduction. IFC investments and advisory services will be developed and delivered in accordance with IFC's mission, strategic pillars and operational strategies. IFC recognizes the responsibility of business to respect human rights independently of the state duties to respect, protect and fulfill human rights. This responsibility means to avoid infringing on the human rights of others and to address adverse human rights impacts business may cause or contribute to. Meeting this responsibility also means creating access to an effective grievance mechanism that can facilitate early indication of and prompt remediation of various project-related grievances. IFC's performance standards supports this responsibility of the private sector. Each of the performance standards has elements related to human rights, dimensions that businesses may face in the course of their operations. IFC's roles and responsibilities. IFC assumes several roles and responsibilities under this policy. With respect to any particular activity, the level of IFC's engagement is determined by the nature and the scope of the proposed investment or advisory activity, as well as the specific circumstances of the collaboration and relationship with the client. There are several types of activities that IFC does not support, either through its investments or advisory services. Did you know? Established at the end of World War II to restore economic stability, the International Monetary Fund promotes financial cooperation and growth among its 185 member countries. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development UNCTAD. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development UNCTAD, promotes the development-friendly integration of developing countries into the world economy. The organization aims to help shape current policy debates and thinking on development with a particular focus on ensuring that domestic policies and international action are mutually supportive in bringing about sustainable development. Established in 1964, UNCTAD is the principal organ of the General Assembly in the field of trade and development. UNCTAD undertakes its mandate through three key functions as a forum for intergovernmental deliberations supported by discussions with experts and exchanges of experience aimed at consensus building, undertaking research, policy analysis and data collection, and providing technical assistance tailored to the specific requirements of developing countries with special attention to the needs of the least developed countries, LDCs and of economies in transition, engagement with external factors. 
UNCTAD views NGOs and the private sector as full-fledged partners in its activities, allowing the organization to have a better understanding of the concerns of members of civil society and to supply a better response to the specific needs and requirements. UNCTAD reaches out to non-governmental stakeholders in various ways including through the dissemination of its work via a number of informal channels, using the networks of associated institutions and actors, and through informal meetings and dialogue. Civil Society UNCTAD cooperates with civil society actors by setting up formal and informal mechanisms for NGO participation and contribution to UNCTAD's activities, including participation in conferences, workshops and seminars, producing publications, information sharing and policy analysis through exchange of ideas and implementation of technical cooperation programs. The private sector. UNCTAD cooperates with the private sector in research and technical cooperation in the areas of international trade, transport, investment, development, finance and technology. The private sector representatives participate in seminars, in workshops and in conferences. IDA and IBRD the International Development Association, IDA, is the part of the World Bank that helps the world's poorest countries. Established in 1960, IDA aims to reduce poverty by providing loans called credits and grants for programs that boost economic growth, reduce inequalities and improve people's living conditions. IDA complements the World Bank's original lending arm, the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, IBRD. IBRD was established to function as a self-sustaining business and provides loans and advice to middle-income and credit-worthy countries. IBRD and IDA share the same staff and headquarters and implement and evaluate projects with the same rigorous standards. What we do The world's poorest countries are often unable to attract sufficient capital to support their urgent development needs and therefore rely on official aid flows as a critical source of funding. IDA is a multi-issue institution supporting a range of development activities such as primary education, basic health services, clean water and sanitation, environmental safeguards, agriculture, business climate improvements, infrastructure and institutional reforms. How does IDA work? IDA funding and voice IDA is overseen by its 172 shareholder countries which comprise the board of governors. Did you know? The International Bank for Reconstruction and Development IBRD, and International Monetary Fund IMF were established by delegates at the Bretton Woods Conference in 1944 and became operational in 1946. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. The International Monetary Fund IMF is a public institution established with money provided by taxpayers around the world. IDA is a multi-issue institution supporting a range of development activities such as primary education, basic health services, clean water and sanitation, environmental safeguards, agriculture, business climate improvements, infrastructure and institutional reforms. The ADB continues to support the integration of the region's financial sector to facilitate the channeling of savings from net saving DMCs to net borrowing ones. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD, promotes the development-friendly integration of developing countries into the world economy. The IMF is the central institution of the international monetary system, the system of international payments and exchange rates among national currencies that enable business to take place between countries. The International Finance Cooperation, IFC, is an international financial institution which offers investment, advisory and asset management services to encourage private sector development in developing countries.